Hi, everybody. Welcome to our uh, CIMAF Friday forecasting talks. Today, um, Günther Fontaine will present on demand planning and forecasting. It's not only about the software. This will be uh, a presentation more focused on the business side uh, of forecasting. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to uh, sort of give you a short overview, short idea of the center. We organize these events. You can have uh, this. Uh, you can see this slide, which summarizes our different activities and our members. Uh, we do work in supply chain forecasting, machine learning, and other activities. We even have some expertise in marketing analytics. Um, and we have several websites where you can follow us. There is a landing page of these uh, events. There is a YouTube channel, website, Twitter, and so on and so forth. And we are also preparing a landing page for the demand forecasting courses that we deliver. This is a, a very short uh, introduction to what the center does. And uh, today, Günther will, will present on the topic, which is quite relevant to what the center does. And I think it should be interesting to the participants of this event. So over to Günther. Uh, let me send you live. OK, first of all, thanks, uh, Ivan, for the uh, introduction. So today, indeed, I will not talk about uh, the mount planning and forecasting uh, software, although um, it's a very interesting topic. But I will talk more, let's say, about the, prereq the uh, prerequisites uh, to have, let's say, at the end, uh, an efficient use of demand planning and forecasting software. Let's introduce myself very short. Um, I have a different background. Uh, first of all, in the beginning of my career, I have been working 12 years in the chemical and in the logistics industry in different roles. Uh, afterwards, I made uh, a complete uh, different step in my uh, professional career. I went more to the uh, software vendors. I've been working uh, more as four years for SAP. I've also working uh, at that time for Managistics, but always in the supply chain management area. And afterwards, um, I switched over more to the uh, consulting side. And right now I am working, let's say, as partner for two companies. Um, and there is a close link uh, between these companies. Uh, Xelios is a supply chain uh, management uh, consulting company and Optimat is uh, a supply chain planning tool. So um, normally uh, I work, let's say, about 30% uh, from uh, in Xelios and Optimact, um, more uh, managing, let's say, also the two companies together with the other partner, but I'm still involved, let's say, 70% uh, in, uh, in projects where I, together with my customers, uh, optimize the supply chain uh, of uh, our customers. So what is the program for the uh, presentation? First, I will explain a little bit the abstract uh, of the presentation, then a very short introduction on demand planning and forecasting as input, let's say, for the entire supply chain planning. What are the prerequisites, uh, let's say, to have an efficient demand planning process? And at the end, uh, when because I was using, let's say, a kind of roadmap, at the end, we will end, say, with technology. And then at the end, you can also uh, ask uh, questions. OK, so the abstract of the presentation. So um, what I often see um, is that uh, if we talk about uh, demand planning and forecasting uh, software, that this technology have been modified over time and in relation with forecasting models also, they have changed over time. So uh, statistical models have been modified for forecasting purposes and a number of new forecasting models have also emerged over time and even some forecasting models have been adapted to certain industries. 
but people talk quite a lot about technology, about artificial intelligence, about statistics, about algorithms. But uh, what about, for example, your supply chain strategy? What about your supply chain processes and the interaction between your supply chain processes and the processes uh, within uh, other departments of your organization? What about your supply chain organization? Also, what you often see if you talk with people is uh, their mindset, because if you talk about forecast, people yeah, try or say quite easy, yeah, but forecast, we don't work with that because it's always wrong. And at the end, you will see that it's also uh, a different uh, mindset uh, in the company. But at the end, it's a quite important topic let's say if we talk about demand planning and forecasting. And at the end, we have the whole data. Of course, you can't generate forecasting models. You can't generate supply chain planning if you don't have the data. But also here we see uh, many issues uh, in that area. So um, at the end, uh, I got a request from uh, from marketing analytics and forecasting and of course, it's quite easy to talk about the sexy things about uh, the technology, about uh, all these models, but I took a different approach and I said, OK, let's uh, try to make a certain roadmap in order to end with technology. And if we talk about demand planning and forecasting, as already mentioned before, first you have to start with your strategy. Your strategy, you have to translate that into processes, uh, processes uh, on different levels within your organization. Based on your processes, you can also set up uh, your complete organization. Um, meaning if we talk about organization, then automatically you have a discussion about who is responsible, who is accountable, who should be consulted and who should be informed. And also here you see many discrepancies if you are doing, let's say, uh, a project in relation with supply chain planning. OK, you can have, let's say, an organization, but what about the mindset uh, of the people in that organization? What about the mindset in relation with forecasting and demand planning on uh, management or senior management level? What about the mindset uh, of forecasting on an operational level? And at the end, also the data, uh, although we spend quite a lot of time in maintaining uh, data, we still come to the conclusion that data is still a very difficult topic in many organizations. And unfortunately, you can't drive, let's say, technology in an efficient way if your data is uh, not, uh, not OK. So I will follow, let's say, these, uh, these blocks where I will start, let's say, with a strategy to finalize with the technology. OK, if we talk about uh, demand planning and forecasting, what are the fundamentals of demand planning and forecast, forecasting? I've only listed a few. Of course, there are many more. But if we talk about the mount planning, uh, the mount planning is, let's say, the overall process and forecasting is part of this process. Also, also here you see when you are doing a project that people really concentrate on the forecasting part, but they forget that forecasting is just part, let's say, of a bigger process. Uh, also, forecast is not a goal. It's not a budget or a plan. What, what do I mean with this is that a goal is what we would like to achieve. A budget is based on expectations and a forecast is based on a plan. Uh, all variables are not equally forecastable and also during your optimization of forecasting, you have also to pay attention on that, that you can check also your forecastability of your, uh, your products. The uh, forecast horizon depends uh, on the lead time. It's quite uh, quite logic. Uh, different planning domains uh, requires uh, different requirements and also variations in demand are not only caused by internal forces, but also external forces and the external forces we forget often. We spend quite a lot of time in, in making sure that at the end we have a consensus within the company. 
And of course, we already go one step further because we try also to receive the forecast uh, from our customers. But there are many more external factors which you have to take into consideration from the moment, let's say, you uh, generate uh, your forecast. So therefore, I put it also as a fundamental of the mount planning because this is also uh, important. What are the fundamentals of uh, supply, supply chain planning? So that at the end you come to the conclusion that the mount planning and forecast is really the driver of your supply chain. Um, forecast based on the consumer demand reduce the bullwhip effect. Uh, safety stock is affected by the forecast uh, horizon. So the longer the horizon, the more uncertainty you have in your uh, in your supply chain. Production capacity and demand forecasts are independent uh, of each other, but of course there is a very close link. Uh, this is also the reason why I believe that to start, let's say, with a sales forecast, you discuss the sales forecast and come to a consensus. And at the end, let's say you have uh, at the end of your sales and operations planning process, you have your production forecast, which is then the input, let's say, for the production. The demand variability affects inventory, so the higher variability in demand, the more difficult it is to forecast. And logic, the more levels we have in the supply chain, the more difficult it will be. But this is also a very uh, 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 important fundamental uh, to make sure that at the end your technology can also uh, deal with that. OK, if to give you an overview on where you have to uh, localize the mount planning and forecasting, I prepared, let's say, a kind of a picture where at the right you have your decision time frame where we talk about years, months, months, weeks, days and hours. And of course, based on that, you have also, let's say, a strategic part, a tactical and an operational part. First of all, you start with your strategic plan. And based on that, you have to prepare a supply chain plan and a production plan, which is then the input for the sales and operations planning, meaning your SNOP process. And your SNOP process is then, let's say, also the input for your master production sh uh, scheduling. Then we have, of course, on the left, we have demand side activities, and on the right, we have supply side activities. I will not focus uh, on the supply side activities because this has more to do with manufacturing uh, uh, companies. I will focus more on the demand, demand side activities. So here you will find in the middle of demand planning. And uh, in demand planning, we use forecast and distribution requirements planning. And at the end, they will give demand planning, they will give input uh, to sales and operations planning and also to master production scheduling. On the right, I will not uh, mention that, uh, of course, you have also your resource planning and your rough cut capacity planning, which give uh, input to your SNOP and your MPS uh, process. And then uh, the master production scheduling gives input to requirements planning. But of course, there is a close link between forecast and inventory management, because based on your forecast, what you normally should do is uh, calculate your inventory parameters based on, first of all, your forecast and also uh, on the life cycle uh, of your products. So at the end, inventory management uh, is also uh, an input for the material requirements planning. And then, uh, let's say, on a very operational level, on the right side, you have also your capacity requirements planning. So at the end, as a result of your uh, material requirements planning, you have your production orders, uh, which is then the basis for your detailed uh, scheduling, meaning the, the planning of your uh, production uh, orders uh, into your capacity and your uh, uh, into your resources. And of course, it's also the basis of uh, purchase orders. So um, by showing this picture, I hope you understand that uh, everything which has to do with the mount planning and forecast 
that this is a very uh, important input, let's say, for your entire supply chain planning. So this was just to give you an overall introduction. So the next topic I would like to discuss is OK. If we talk about demand planning and forecasting, uh, what are really then the prerequisites in order to have really a very efficient uh, demand planning uh, process uh, at the end? So as mentioned before, uh, you start with your goals of the company, your strategy, uh, you have your products and of course these products are uh, pushed into uh, several markets. And based on that, uh, what you should do is first of all do a segmentation. Segmentation of your products. Based on that, do a segmentation in relation with the markets and also an order segmentation and a supply chain segmentation. Uh, sorry, a supply, supply segmentation and based on that, uh, the segmentation will give uh, inputs to inventory strategy, to your forecast concept and also to your planning concept. And at the end, this will be translated into uh, inventory simulations, uh, processes and systems. And based on that, you have the possibility to, let's say, to create a supply chain improvement plan, which is then the basis uh, during an implementation of uh, a demand planning process or uh, the implementation of uh, forecasting tools that first of all you have to review your processes based on that you have to align on responsibilities you have to configure your systems uh, you have to implement then review data improve data and also set up reporting and implement all actions and if you have done that at the end, of course, you have to uh, monitor all the uh, improvements. So in the beginning, I've spoken about the roadmap. So I will now discuss, let's say, uh, the five uh, blocks. Uh, so at the end, uh, we will come then to the technology part. First of all, um, it's about the strategy. What is your supply chain strategy? Um, if you ask these questions and of course, if we start with projects, this is the first question normally we ask. Uh, we come always, let's say, to the to the conclusion that this is not always clear within an organization. Um, so meaning, first of all, you have to start from your overall strategy and in order, to, in order to come to your overall strategy, you have different uh, models. Um, I, have only, I used here only one model so that a company has, can have, let's say, as a strategy or product leadership or customer intimacy or operational excellence, meaning if you have a focus on operational excellence, you have really a focus on costs. This will have also, for example, an impact on your inventory. If you have a focus on customer intimacy, there, of course, you would like to deliver uh, all the products uh, at the right time, at the right place, in, in the, um, at the right quantity. So this, is a, this will have also an impact, for example, on your inventory. Or you can have a strategy where the focus is more on product leadership, uh, research and development. Of course, you need uh, all three, let's say, to compete. But based on your strategy, certain companies uh, will go more in the direction uh, of operational excellence of their focus is more on the customer intimacy. But th this should be clear because based on this, you can um, you can, let's say, go to your overall supply chain strategy, which is the starting point to make the link later with your uh, processes, with the organization. Uh, with your data and at the end also with your technology. So this is just an example. You have also here many uh, models, but this is a model I sometimes use when I do, let's say, exercises with my customers in relation with supply chain strategy. So meaning you can have uh, the focus on efficiency and there you have uh, several possibilities going from uh, continuous flow, efficient, uh, fast, but you can have also an orientation on responsiveness, meaning you can have really a custom configured uh, supply chain or an agile or a flexible. And for each of these blocks, you have, let's say, to determine, okay, 
what is the business framework you would like to operate, um, what is the management focus um, uh, for, uh, for your supply chain, for example, uh, KPIs, and at the end you have also your supply chain profile, and your supply chain profile will determine later also the, the link, let's say, with your process, the link with the organization, the link with your data, and again, the link with technology. So this is the first uh, part, let's say, of, of the roadmap. If the strategy is not clear, um, you can implement, let's say, very good technology, but it will not work at the end. The second block is about the process. Also here, um, if you ask the question again, starting a project, is your supply chain process framework ready? Also here, we come to the conclusion that it's not always the case. I am not saying that uh, companies uh, are not uh, dealing with that, but if you really ask the question, okay, give me all the process maps in relation with supply chain and also in relation with other departments, you will often come to the conclusion that it's somewhere, let's say, fragmented over the organization, meaning sometimes you will uh, find a process uh, somewhere mapped uh, because um, yeah, it was required during an ISO certification, or you will find it somewhere on a shared drive, or uh, you will find it somewhere in the, in the heads of people. But at the end, it's uh, very clear that you have to uh, really go for an integrated supply chain process framework. This is also the way we are working, because if you don't have this, it will be very difficult, let's say. So I just took some screenshots. This is on a very high level. Uh, OK, if we talk about supply chain, uh, what are then the, the five uh, management processes? OK, we talk about supply chain planning. We talk about purchasing. So I'm not talking here about procurement because procurement is normally not belonging to supply chain. But if I talk here about purchasing, it's really about the planning and replenishment based on your contracts you have with your suppliers. One of the blocks is manufacturing. Although manufacturing is also normally in many uh, organizations uh, a separate department, but within manufacturing you have also the production logistics uh, and also um, the, the move, let's say, from your finished products to your uh, finished product warehouse. So therefore manufacturing is also in this um, in this slide you have then also the deliver meaning you have to deliver finally the products to your customer then you have also the reverse meaning that based on the complaint you have to send product back to your supplier or based on a complaint from a customer you have to take back also products from your customers and then you have many supporting supply chain processes which at the end uh, these processes support let's say the five management processes and then you can go deeper and this is all part of that supply chain process framework for example here we talk about supply chain planning and within supply chain planning of course we have demand planning demand planning give, gives input to inventory planning gives input to master production scheduling to material requirements planning and to detailed uh, production planning and on top you have, of course, the orchestrator within your supply chain. It's really the sales and operation planning. And normally all these blocks should uh, should be discussed during your sales and operations uh, planning process. So this is already one level deeper. If we go, if we focus now on demand planning, we go again one level deeper where you find here an abstract. OK, if we talk about demand planning, then these are, let's say, the uh, processes you have to do. It's only a snapshot. If you go one step deeper, then you go really to the, the, the level where you have to define, let's say, OK, who are the stakeholders in this process? You already see that this is already much more detailed. And this is, in fact, the level you need in order to start with implementing technology. So here we are already at level four, and even sometimes you have to go to level five or level six, because here you still see activities. For example, on the level five level, 
you will start with doing tasks where you, uh, let's say, where you have one activity which will be split up in many tasks. You see here in this screenshot that you have system actors, for example, the demand planning tool, but you have also the human actors, for example, here, customer service, the demand planner, the sales executive, and in this example, a product manager. And why is it so important? Because this is also the basis for your organization, because based on level four and level five, you can prepare a um, Reiki matrix, which at the end gives you an ID for all these activities in a specific process. Who is, let's say, responsible, who should be accountable, who should be consultant and who should be uh, informed. And by doing this, this is then, let's say, the bridge for your organization. So this is the third topic. Uh, if we talk about organization, what we have seen the last years, and this is also, let's say, uh, a kind of a maturity within an organization, if we talk about demand planning and forecasting, that companies has to move, let's say, from silo thinking to consensus thinking. Uh, just again, um, a snapshot. So this is really a maturity model and certain companies are already maybe at stage one or stage two, but at the end, uh, if you talk about an efficient demand planning process uh, and also about really giving value, let's say, to your supply chain, then you have really to move to uh, stage four. And of course, at the end, this will have also an impact on the technology. So I will not explain in detail, but for example, if you start on stage one, is that uh, yeah that you see some forecasting efforts, but yeah, forecasting is really not on the agenda and everyone is doing something, but at the end, it's really not connected. Then in stage two, there you will find already that you have already some meetings between the different departments and that already you start talking about uh, about forecast and then moving more to stage three and stage four. It's really that at the end you have really integrated platform and communication between the different uh, departments and that you start, let's say, with a sales forecast and that at, uh, at the end you can uh, end with a production forecast, which is then used further in your uh, supply chain. And then the last part, it's really about uh, really the complete integration. What, what you see then is then within supply chain, who is then really the orchestrator, that they are responsible for that process, but other people should be, um, uh, should be uh, accountable or consulted or informed. Uh, then you see also that there is really an integration between the forecast you receive uh, uh, from your customers and uh, also there that uh, forecasting is really on the radar of many people uh, within the organization and that it's also an integrated part of your supply chain and operations planning process. So if we talk about organization, what are really the ingredients? First of all, uh, collaboration. Uh, eco voice uh, because normally at stage one and stage two, yeah, you still see that, for example, who scream, who is really uh, shouting, uh, yeah, very loud that these people at the end will, uh, will, uh, yeah, will have the benefits. But if we talk about stage three and stage four, it's really about eco voice. Uh, also, uh, executive support. Still, we see many organizations where forecast is really not on the eyes of uh, executive management, although it should be because um, it's uh, it's an important uh, part, let's say, of your overall strategy. All people should understand the mutual benefits uh, of the month planning and forecast. Supply chain really as the orchestrator. Of course, the impact uh, uh, of technology on the different stages. So the more you are moving from stage one to stage four, the more you have also to invest uh, in technology. In stage one, you start with an Excel. In stage four, you don't work any any more with an uh, Excel. You work, let's say, with dashboards, and everyone is looking, let's say, to the 
to the same dashboard and you take decisions based on your dashboard. And then at the end, the mindset. Um, this is then again the link with the next. The mindset of forecasting and the mount planning. Um, who is the owner of the mount planning and forecasting? This is a very interesting discussion. And it also depends, let's say, to who you are talking in an organization. If you talk to, uh, to salespeople, they will say, yeah, we are not the owner of, uh, of forecast. We are not accountable. And the only thing uh, what for us is important is make sure that the customer receives their product. So I don't care about forecast. It's the responsibility of, of supply chain. If you talk with supply chain people, they will say, yeah, we are only responsible because at the end we can generate a forecast, but we are not, let's say, involved in day to day discussions with with the customers. So they say, yeah, no, uh, sales is uh, uh, accountable for forecast. So at the end, um, this is also um, a point where you have to pay attention during um, during your process in, in relation with the mount planning and, and forecasting because you can have the best analytics, uh, a very good process and great uh, uh, collaboration. But at the end, you still uh, see that uh, your demand planning uh, process is not, uh, not optimal. And why is that? Because the process and the practices of demand planning by themselves will not necessarily improve the planning. Uh, therefore, we need also a very proper uh, mindset. And this already started, let's say, with the previous topic. Make sure that you have, let's say, um, a model in place that you know exactly who is responsible, who is accountable, who should be consulted and who should be informed. Because if you don't have, it will never work because you will always see a battle between sales and operations and at the end, uh, you will have not, let's say, the benefits uh, out of it. And of course, you will see a big impact on your overall uh, supply chain. And you can go, uh, you can even go one step further, is that at the end, all stakeholders own the forecast. And I know this is maybe very uh, difficult to understand, but you have to go that far in an, in an organization that everyone has to understand that everyone sees something or anything that might have an impact what the company needs to produce or distribute so therefore it's very important that there is somewhere a communication and that you have to integrate this also in your communications and reporting lines i give an example for example customer service they have let's say every day contact with also operational people on customer side and sometimes they can hear certain things which is important uh, to to uh, to analyze and to understand further so it's not only uh, sales who has contact but for example in the r d also people will have contact um, with with customers so at the end the mindset should be that all stakeholders in fact owns the forecast and whenever you hear something that you need, uh, let's say, a proper communication and reporting so that all that information is part, let's say, of your overall demand planning and forecasting process. And as such, it should also be uh, mapped in, in that way that you have also a communication line in your processes to make sure that uh, all the information is somewhere available. Then we come to the to the data. Um, and of course, the input of supply chain planning tools is data. And the more we understand the data, the better it is. Also here, um, if, we, if we have a look, let's say, to our tool, then we come often to the conclusion that uh, if we have somewhere a bug, then let's say 60% has nothing to do that there is a technical issue in the software, but that there is an issue with the data or that someone has changed the data without uh, looking further. So first of all, make sure that all your data is correct, reliable and consistent. And although there are um, many uh, there, that uh, companies pay quite a lot of uh, attention to that, still you come to the conclusion that 
data is still not correct, not reliable and not consistent at all. So the first thing you have to do is understand your data. It's not only a question of uploading data out of your ERP system in your supply chain planning tools because this is just setting up an interface, but you have also to pay attention on understanding the data. How much data do we need? Which data is more appropriate? Do we need aggregated data or disaggregated data? Because here again, link with technology. Is there somewhere a missing data value? Is there an outlier in the data which I have to remove? Um, is there a structural change in the data uh, in which life cycle phase is the product? So uh, also here pay attention and we see often that people just upload the data and that no one is looking to the data and understand the data. One step further is that you have to play with your data before the demand planning process. For example, in doing uh, um, in doing uh, segmentations, for example, customer, product, supplier, market, or combinations. Um, I will explain you one example, um, which has a huge impact at the end on your forecasting techniques or your algorithms you have to use, let's say, in your forecasting uh, software. The example is about doing uh, the product portfolio management is uh, do first of all do a multi-dimensional ABC analysis based on the value uh, which the product brings to the company and the forecastability and at the end you have let's say four groups of products you have products with a low value low for low forecastability low value high forecastability high value low forecastability and high value and then high forecastability now if you translate that, then you have four categories. On the right, on top, you have, let's say, your strategic, your fast moving products. These are the products with a high value and a high forecastability. Uh, on the left, you have risk and new products, which are normally very difficult to forecast. These are products with a high value and a low forecastability. And below on the right, you have your flow, your mature, uh, your, your, sorry, your mature products with a low value and a high forecastability. And on the left below, you have your slow moving products with a low value and a low forecastability. By doing this segmentation at the end, these four groups, let's say, requires different um, uh, forecasting models and different algorithms. I will not explain um, all the all the different uh, algorithms here because I suppose that other uh, webinars will concentrate on that. The only message I would like to give is that what you often see is that companies are using, let's say, uh, the same forecast model or the same algorithm for all their products, which at the end is not correct and of course then you have a discussion, yeah, but the forecast is not correct for a certain product um, and which can be at the end, but you have to play with the data. And that's also the message I would like to give here. Based on segmentations, you can really improve your forecast to make sure that at the end, based on the characteristics of your products, based on the characteristics, let's say, of the markets in which you are operating, that the, the software you are using, the forecasting uh, tools you are using, that um, the tool is using, let's say, the, the right uh, model or the right uh, algorithm uh, at the end. This is also um, what, you, what we see in projects that a lot of, of companies are really not paying attention to this. And then at the end, yeah, people are not happy uh, they say, yeah, forecast is not correct. So, yeah, we don't forecast anymore. But it's really about um, uh, forecast and, and demand planning is really a living process. And that's also the reason why data is so important and that you have really to play with, uh, with the data. So then finally, we come to the technology and um, I will not explain, let's say, how good and how bad technology is. 
because there you have uh, other platforms. I just made uh, a short list. Uh, for me, what are the really the requirements in relation with technology and in relation now, uh, because we talk here about uh, demand planning and about forecasting, but I believe um, the same is applicable, let's say, for supply chain planning, uh, let's say, as a whole. For me, is that um, a system should uh, work or should have the ability to work with different forecasting techniques, although that the system should also be able to work with an expert selection that based on the characteristics of your uh, products that your uh, forecasting tool will come up, let's say, with the best forecasting model or the best forecasting technique so that um, you can start from that and if you are much more familiar with forecasting techniques or with statistics you can apply let's say your own uh, models but still um, in a lot of companies you still see that yeah that we still people are lacking to that uh, to that knowledge so therefore i believe expert selection should be available uh, in these kind of tools also data and supply chain analysis, because um, it's not that you generate a forecast, that it's okay, no, you have to analyze on a continuous basis your supply chain. Uh, also start every time a supply chain improvement project so that at the end, it's uh, a process of continuous uh, improvement. Also uh, make sure that you have the possibility to aggregate and disaggregate your data. Uh, at the end, uh, of course, you will you you need the forecast on an SKU level, but also uh, more and more you still see customers asking for yeah, but I would like to do let's say a forecast a combination of SKUs in combination with customers or markets or regions. So also here, pay attention uh, to that uh, to see this is available in the technology dashboard and reporting. Also management by exception, if you have to deal with many SKUs and yeah, sometimes we talk about 250,000 SKUs, yeah, you can't uh, see everything. So also there, make sure that you can work management by exception that based on criteria that the system will say, OK, uh, this amount of products, that's OK. You don't have to look to the forecast, but for example, that you can concentrate on those products, for example, with a big trend or with uh, very high uh, forecast or whatever. Also, based on what I've explained before on the segmentation, should be user friendly. And uh, this is also one of the reasons why we started five years ago with Optimact, because still many tools are not user friendly. So at the end, people don't like to work with these tools. Should be easy to implement. Um, the process um, also here, um, it's maybe uh, a strange statement, but for me, a supply chain process is in most industries generic. It's only on level five and le uh, level four that you will see differences in the markets which customers are operating. Um, of course, also the products, but let's say uh, in relation with level one and level two and level three, this is really about generic. So also, if you start implementing technology, uh, make sure that um, that uh, statements about our business is unique or our business is different. Uh, every time we come to the conclusion that this is not true, uh, of course, at the end, it's uh, really the markets and the products and 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 certain criteria will be different, but the overall process in uh, supply chain is quite generic. And also um, um, in relation with, OK, do we need uh, an on-premise solution or a cloud solution also here? But of course, this is my my view is that it's easier to have a cloud solution. Why? Because what you see is what you get and at the end, um, an on-premise installation, first of all, you need always involvement from IT. Uh, for a cloud solution, it's really uh, business-based and you are not confronted, let's say, with difficult upgrades and, uh, 
and uh, new releases uh, because if you install it on premise uh, even on the database level you have to take into consider into consideration that also here you need upgrades which is not the case let's say with uh, with the cloud solution so therefore i really would do the recommendation to work in the cloud in relation with supply chain planning okay at the end so I tried to give a different uh, view in relation with demand planning, in relation with uh, forecasting, because if we talk about this topic, it's quite um, that you come, let's say, on a discussion on yeah, forecasting models, data, um, the networks, uh, and so on. But please do not forget, let's say, the, uh, the other topics like strategy, like uh, processes, organization, mindset, and your data. So um, thanks for listening. And of course, if you have questions, you can uh, ask these questions because I believe that Ivan has, um, uh, has already received some questions. I don't know. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Gunther. OK, so we have several questions. Uh, Let's start with the first one. From your experience, uh, do more accurate forecasts lead to better inventory decisions? Uh, what do you think? Uh, yes, for sure. Um, and we see also that in our own tool, uh, we started, let's say, a couple of years with forecasting and inventory management. And then based on that, we also in, uh, evolved over time. But what we still see is that many organizations still do inventory management, inventory planning based not on forecasting. So you can't do a proper uh, inventory planning without forecasting, meaning based on your forecast and based also that if you do a forecast that you will understand much better also your life cycle of your products. Based on that, you have to optimize even sometimes in certain industries on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a month monthly basis. You have to optimize every time your inventory parameters, which is critical at the end, because if you run your material requirements planning, if you don't have optimized inventory parameters, also your inventory planning will not be efficient. So for sure, forecasting is a very important input for inventory management and inventory planning. OK, thank you. Uh, the next question do we have is uh, how to make sure that different departments talk to each other. For example, demand planners do not always know what happens in marketing departments. Yeah, so I have spoken about the sales and operations planning process and also based on uh, our uh, our experiences still you see that in certain organizations it's about having a, no a nice talk let's say during the sales and operations planning process but you need you really need a structure in that as an op process meaning that first of all you have your pre-executive uh, meetings meaning amount planning review your inventory planning review your supply your manufacturing review and at the end, you bring all these stakeholders together in an executive. And there it's important that, first of all, everyone is looking to the same data and that someone also take notes of what has been discussed and what decisions were made. Because this is also what you see that at the end of these kind of meetings, um, no one has taken any notes. So it's also very difficult than to do something uh, with with that kind of information. And I believe the uh, SNOP platform is, of course, the right um, organizational structure within an organization that people uh, can talk to each other. More important that people can look to the same uh, to the same data because on all these platforms, everyone is has their own Excel uh, and of course, at the end, no one is looking to the same data. So SNOP is for me the right platform to have a proper communication, although of course, you still you need, of course, your day to day communication and do not forget that because that's even more important at the end. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Yes, uh, what you say makes perfect sense. And uh, I think we as a center also face a lot of issues like that when we talk to companies. The next uh, question is uh, very big, so I will try to reduce it. Uh, having RACI metrics uh, is something many companies forget to do, but sometimes we have several actors connected to the forecast, so the forecasting process could be exhausting. What would you recommend to speed up uh, the forecasting process? Yeah, of course, first of all, start with mapping your processes. Yeah. And although you come to the conclusion by doing that, and you, if you come to the conclusion that you have many stakeholders in that process, then you have, first of all, to optimize the process. Does it make sense, for example, that all these stakeholders uh, should be there? Uh, and at the end, everyone would like to say something about forecast, but often this does not, this does not make always sense. So already with optimizing your process, and by doing that, you at the end, you will have also a matrix where you really can clearly define um, yeah, the accountabilities and the responsibilities. But I believe by doing this already, it's already um, yeah, one step forward. And still, for me, I believe that supply chain, supply chain organization should be the orchestrator of not only about forecasting, of course, but it's an important player to make sure that the right stakeholders has the right information in relation with forecast so that at the end uh, people can take the right decision. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The next question is from uh, Anna Sorgenis. She's asking, uh, in, your, in your experience, what steps from your diagram are often forgotten or disregarded by uh, companies? Uh, <laughs> it's quite easy to say. <laughs> Um, although that most of the companies are applying uh, some of these blocks, yeah, what you still see is that if we talk about uh, optimizing a demand planning process or a forecasting process, that often we go immediate to technology and that we come in a discussion how we are going to improve that. But first you have to define what would like you what would you like to do, let's say, and that's total. Uh, that's a total different discussion you need. So um, yeah, uh, to be honest, all these blocks, uh, although that organizations um, yeah uh, apply these blocks, often we see that there are still a lot of uh, difficulties are in these uh, in these blocks. Um, um, we don't know all the processes we don't know who should be involved we don't know um yeah for example in relation with uh, with data also here still many issues in relation with data although that most of the companies are already talking for example about artificial intelligence i can say that most of the companies are even not yet not yet ready for that mm. Thanks. And the next question related to the previous, what steps are most impacted by COVID from this diagram, I guess? Uh, which diagram? Uh, the, the one that you uh, ah, yeah. make big yeah. steps. Um, I believe um, now in COVID times, uh, of course, it's very difficult first of all to, uh, to make a proper forecast, but for that, um, you should at least have an efficient process in place. But I see now that that companies um, that they are dealing with with uh, issues in relation with the organization yeah? because every most of the people are working from home and uh, you have also um, uh, managers who should um, who should uh, drive their uh, organization. So now in COVID times is that what I see is that uh, the organizational uh, thing is, is really uh, an issue right now mm -hmm. because the rest you can manage. But uh, of course, uh, we are still dealing with people. And of course, it's much more easier if you can talk uh, with people, uh, let's say physically, especially if we talk about forecasting also and about supply chain, than doing this all the time via, via conference call. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Next question about inventory. Um, 
isn't the inventory the result of demand and supply alignment? So shouldn't it be uh, after the demand plan and supply plan and not in between demand and supply plans? Yeah, for me, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it was a misunderstanding, uh, but let's say the input of uh, inventory planning and inventory management is your demand planning process. But of course, it's not it's it's uh, not stopping there. And first of all, your uh, the outcome of inventory management are inventory parameters, which is then the input for your MPS and your MRP. But of course, also in relation with inventory, yeah, you have to do also many other analysis. For example, is my planning policy correct, or what about the life cycles of of my products? So also here. Inventory management, it's not only a, a one time thing. No, it's a, an ongoing uh, thing because yeah, at the end, if we talk about inventory, yeah, we are talking about cash in a company. So mm -hmm. thank you. We have two more questions. Uh, the first one is from Robert Files. And what do you see as the key lever to persuade uh, an organization to commit to forecasting improvement? Can you repeat, please? So what do you see is the key lever to persuade organization to commit to forecasting improvement? So how to convince them? Um, first of all, it has to start from senior management. If senior management is not uh, convinced about the importance of, uh, of forecasting, then it will be very difficult, let's say, to explain that uh, to uh, to your organization below. That's the reason why I've also uh, mentioned that uh, management attention is, is really important in that area. Um, and if you have a management attention when it's really on the radar of, of senior people, then I believe it automatically it will become also on the radar, let's say, of, of the entire organization. But there you already see that it stops and that it's not always on the radar of senior management uh, people. Mm -hmm. So it in a way depends on, on people. If you have correct people there, then it's possible to do otherwise. Yeah, of course, but it's only also in relation then with the mindset of the people and also with the processes eh, at the end. Mm -hmm. And also the, the mindset is very important eh, because you hear if you talk with people in relation with forecasts, yeah, for example, if you talk with salespeople, yeah, the first thing they will say, yeah, but the forecast is always wrong and I don't want to make forecast. Uh, I don't, uh, for me, the only thing what's, uh, what's uh, important is that I have inventory in the warehouse so that I can deliver my customers. But of course, that's not a target of, for example, a supply chain management department. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And the last question that we have is uh, from John Boylan. What experience do you have of improving market slash order segmentation leading to an enhanced forecast concept? My experience is that that most of the companies are not dealing with that. Um, so what you often see is that yeah, if you generate a forecast by using technology, is that the focus is more on one or two forecast algorithms or an expert selection. But based on the fact that, of course, in order to do segmentation, you need data, you need proper data, and you need someone, and you need also a tool at the end to do this kind of segmentations. But I can guarantee you that by doing segmentations, and I've only given one example, but you have many examples. If you do a proper segmentation, let's say of your data, really you can improve, let's say your forecast. And of course, forecast accuracy is also a, a very hot, uh, very hot topic. So yeah, I'm really a strong believer in play with the data at the end because yeah, you can you can learn from your data, you can apply your data into improvement projects, and I believe also that at the end. If you are using forecasting tools, um, yeah, your forecast will be much better than if you don't segment at all. Uh, yes, thank you. I think that this, this question is uh, something that this, the center has faced uh, over the years in different contexts. So we totally agree. ABC, XYZ or whatever analysis helps yeah. 
you, you need to be very careful in what you select for different. Yeah, this is, this is also the reason why uh, if you talk about technology that at least because you have many data in supply chain planning tools, that you have, that you have also say a block in the technology that you can really play with your data in doing very detailed analysis and by doing this analysis you will come to the conclusion that yeah that it will be much more better mm -hmm. but what we often see is that people are already happy that a forecasting tool is working and that they have a forecast but at the end yeah they don't play with the data and for me data is key data is knowledge and, and so on so yes makes sense uh, i'm afraid we're running out of time so thank you very much everybody for asking questions and let's thank uh, Gunther for his presentation. I, I think this was a yes, Robert, you want I was to just going to say thank you. Yes, uh, interesting uh, perspective on some of the organizational issues which uh, get too little attention by researchers, certainly. Yeah, so for those people who are interested, I can always uh, share, let's say, my presentation but then you have to contact let's say uh, Ivan for that uh, I will make the presentation also available I will send the latest version of the presentation to Ivan so uh, all participants can ask for the presentation so um, it's not uh, let's say it's not a secret at the end okay. <laughs> the secret is in doing it <laughs> yes Thanks. So okay. we Thank will you. publish publish the video recording of this event, and I will circulate the link via uh, the link to slides via LinkedIn and other sources. Yeah. And in two weeks we will have a workshop on forecast value added by Robert Files. So thanks everybody for participating. Thank you, Gunter, once again, and see yeah. you all in two weeks. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.